Hey guys, today we're going to be setting up a wireless point-to-point -point network using these two LegalWave DLP 520AC radios. This will allow you to extend your network beyond the maximum distance of wired connections. Let's get these unboxed, configured, and installed so that we can test out the bandwidth with some security cameras and you'll see everything that's required to get these up and running. So basically what I have here is two radio antennas and when they're pointed towards each other they act as a super long network cable allowing you to extend your network up to 15 kilometers or 9.32 miles depending on your country's wireless regulations. So there's no need to spend hours and lots of money installing special underground cables and conduits. These devices are from Legal Wave and can be used pretty much anywhere to extend your home or corporate network as long as you have a line of sight and of course a power source at each end. This could be between two office buildings, two commercial structures, construction sites, or from your home to an out structure like a barn, workshop, or a shed. So this is not an ad for Legal Wave. If there's something about it that I like, I'll tell you. And if there's something I dislike, I'll let you know. So let's say this is your house and you have a workshop or a barn 500 feet or 152 meters away. And when you install a set of Legal Wave radios on each of these structures, you'll be able to share the cameras from the barn with the house and the internet from the house to the barn. Now the working temperature for this device is between minus 40 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit up to 65 Celsius or 140 Fahrenheit. The model number of 520AC indicates that the radio uses 5 gigahertz frequency and the 20 means the gain or the DBI. Now basically this is the focusing or shaping of the radio waves from the device and the higher the number the more direct or flatter the waves will be. It has a data throughput of about 500 Mbps but again we'll have a look at that a little later when we get these set up. They cost about $100 US each and of course you're going to need two if you want to have a point-to-point -point network and the links for these uh, devices are in the description below. The installation guide pretty much just shows you the box contents and how to physically install the antennas. This is the transmitting and receiving device. Now this is the mounting bracket made from thick heavy plastic with degree markings on each side to help better align the device. Some strapping for mounting the device onto a pole. A weatherproofing grommet. Now you're going to need to feed your network cable through this before terminating it with an RJ45 connection. Now this is the PoE injector to provide the antenna with electricity and a data connection to your network. This is a 24 volt injector and cannot be substituted with a PoE switch. Now one side is plugged into a power outlet and the other an ethernet cable for the network or for a PC and that goes into the LAN port. The other port marked PoE that goes directly into the radio itself. And the radio uses about 10 watts of power. But during my testing I didn't see it get much higher than 4 watts. Now let's become more familiar with the antenna. It's made from a hard plastic with an IP66 weather rating. Now here on the back of the device there are some grooves to adjust its tilt when it's installed onto a mounting bracket. Holes in the bracket define the antenna's alignment pitch and the grooves help fine tune this alignment. Now the only opening on the device is here on the bottom where we insert the RJ45 network connection through the grommet. Yes it's a gigabit interface. And lastly we have a set of LED lights which represent the power, network connectivity and signal strength. They also have a nice little flash sequence on boot up. Let's get this access point configured. As indicated in the install guide, the IP address for these devices is 192.168.2.66. So the radio is plugged into my network but when I navigate to that IP address in Chrome, the browser times out. If I try to ping the radio, it cannot be found either. Now looking at the IP address on my router or gateway, it's 192.168.0.x and therefore it can only access devices on that .0 subnet. Now to update the IP address from that .2 subnet to .0, I'm going to need to put my PC on the .2 subnet. So let's plug the radio directly into my computer and update that IP address manually. Now if your computer is Wi-Fi only, you're going to need a hub that has an Ethernet port on it because the only way to do this properly is to have a wired connection directly from your PC to the radio. So here on my PC let's find the properties of the USB RJ45 network connection. I'm in Windows 10 so go to network connections by hitting the start button and start typing control panel. Open the control panel and click network and internet. Click view network status and tasks. Click change adapter settings. Now you should see your network connections. I have two. 
one for my main wireless connection and one for the USB hub. Right click and select properties. Click on Internet Protocol version 4, TCP IPv4, and push the Properties button. Click Use the following IP address. Now enter the IP address of 192.168.2.11 and press Tab. The subnet mask would default to 255.255.255.0. Click OK. Now let's jump back into Chrome again and try accessing that radio. Perfect, I'm in. So the credentials are admin, admin01. Yes, I've read and agreed. I'm going to select Canada and point to point since I'm just setting up two. Let's change that default password now. Go to settings, system configuration, user accounts. Now on the same page under device settings, let's update the friendly name to Lego AP66. Still in the settings area, Go to Network Configuration and notice the Network Mode is Bridge. This is correct, no need to change that. Now on the Ethernet settings space, I'm going to make mine static so I know where I can always find this radio. And I'll change my IP address to .0.66 and my router IP address is .0.1. Now let's move to the wireless configuration area and update the operating mode to access point IPO3. Again, this radio will be on the network side. I'm also going to drop the power all the way down since the two radios are going to be so close to each other. So what about network security? Here on the AP radio, on the wireless config page, update the SSID to be something like Lego AP. Change the security from open to WPA2 personal and enter our passphrase. Now when you hit save, you're going to see all the changes showing in the list. So go ahead and accept those changes. So now that I have this device set up, I'm going to unplug it from my computer and then plug it into my network. I'm also going to write AP.66 on the back so I don't get it mixed up when I'm installing them. So let's get the other one set up. So now that we have the other radio set up, let's plug that one into my PC. Let's motor through this here pretty quick in the other radio. I'll select my region, update the password, update its friendly name to Lego Station 67. And in this case, we're going to make the IP address fixed at 192.168.0.67. Now on the wireless config page, the operating mode will be station IPO3, and I'll drop the power again. Now we'll find the AP unit. Click on the SSD and search for the AP. Once we find it, click on it and enter the passphrase. Hit save to confirm all the changes. So now that we have the station set up, we're going to unplug it from the PC so it's totally standalone. And now this is a good time to go back and update my PC's IP address. So let's do a connectivity test. In Chrome, let's log into the access point. In the upper right hand corner, we see that there's one station connected. The LEDs on the back of the device are also indicating that the devices are linked. On the wireless network page, you can see that the station is attached. Click on the IP address and log into the remote station. Now in the upper right corner, it says that the signal strength is too strong. You want this to be around minus 50, but that's because these units are so close to each other. Now maybe in the field we can enable the Automatic Transit Power Control, ATPC, so that the radios can regulate the power levels themselves. Now when setting up these two radios, keep in mind that the radio waves between each device is like a stretched oval pattern, kind of like when you take a partially inflated balloon and you stretch it out. The waves are at their maximum at the halfway point between the two radios. Now that space of radio frequencies is known as the Fresnel zone. So let's remove the house and the barn from the drawing and put in two commercial spaces that you want to link. Install your two radios so that they have line of sight. Next, we're going to draw the Fresnel zone, and it would be kind of shaped like this between the two devices. We need to protect that Fresnel zone from hitting any structures or even the ground so that the signal doesn't have any interference. So keep that in mind when deciding the height of your antennas to watch out for trees, giraffes, or anything that could disrupt the signal. But how would you know how big the Fresnel zone is when you're planning your system? So I'm going to create a calculator, drop it in my blog, so that you can figure out the radius of the Fresnel zone based on the frequency of the radio that you're using and the distance between the two devices. Okay, so let's add some equipment to the station side so we can access it remotely through the access point. 
First off, a PoE switch. Now this is going to allow me to split the connection that comes from the station and is also going to power some security cameras. These cameras have already been configured and are on the dot zero subnet and function as normal when wired into my network. My first install location will be here, pretty simple, 300 feet away with a Fresno zone of just under four feet. Three long extension cords later and here we have located the station. Connected to the station I have a PoE switch and two 8 megapixel cameras and a 12 megapixel camera. Back here on the access points user interface, let's turn on ATPC with the goal of minus 55. And let's open up a second tab here and connect to the station radio and do the same thing. Now when I mouse over the connection, the status says excellent. Using Legal Waves link test, let's verify the connection between the two radios. I'll do a local to remote test and send small and large chunks of data. Wow, this is way over the spec of 500 Mbps. Very impressive. Now let's check out some camera footage. All three cameras are connected and sending data. Let's check out the bit rate. 1250 kilobits equals about 10 Mbps. Lots of bandwidth to spare. Now let's ping this very camera that I'm looking at here. Wow, there's actually no delay. So how about a real lag test? Wow, that's incredible. Little to no delay. The signal is going from the station to the access point to my home network, my home Wi-Fi, and then to my phone. Best part is I did nothing really special to align these two radios. I simply pointed them at each other. So let's check out some footage since it's such a great day. Let's push the limits of my testing infrastructure and see if we can get some more range on these radios. I've installed the access point here about 20 feet off the ground. And now I'm out here in the country with the station 22 feet up and three security cameras connected. My place is about three kilometers away or 1.86 miles. At this distance, the Fresno zone is much larger with a radius of 22 feet. I'm definitely hitting the ground here and there's trees along the route, but let's proceed anyways. From my home computer, here are the results of the link test from the access point to the station. I can still hit 100 Mbps and when I log into the station, it says my connection is fair. Considering no alignment tools were used and the environment is encroaching on my Fresno zone, I'm surprised to have any signal at all. This is awesome. Check out the great videos that I saved on my PC from the security cameras three kilometers away. So we're back here in the studio and I'm still amazed that the setup was able to transfer those images such a distance. I'm working on getting some access to some higher structures where I can better align the radios and hopefully push the distance even further. That'll be an upcoming video I hope. Now when I go to mount these permanently I'll be using a J-Pole like this one here. Building a point-to-point -point wireless bridge is much easier than I expected and the bandwidth results spoke for themselves. Legal Wave has certainly simplified the process from the physical install right to the configuration. The configuration does have a lot of advanced features which is great when you want to have more control over the device functionalities. Definitely a great solution to tie in another building, an office, workshop, barn into your main network without having to dig trenches or running conduit and burying lines. These devices can be set up in a point to multi point network as well as individual hotspot access points. We'll get to that in an upcoming video. So, I think that's everything you need to know to get up and running. I hope that you found this information helpful. Check out my blog for more information, and Legal Wave also has a lot of great information about the product setup and configuration on their wiki. Product links, as always, are found in the description below. Please hit that like button if you found this helpful, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.